Hey guys, it is Liberty from Spirit Move Ministries. And as usual, once again, um, oh, and Prophecy Now. Hello, Prophecy Now podcast listeners. I'm so excited to be on with you guys always. So as I promised, um, this word is about the reckoning, um, the recovery, uh, angelic activity, um, in response to what God is doing, you guys, things that are already in the works, things that he is already working on. And, um, and I just felt really strongly and I already knew I needed to, because there's been too much stuff, angelic activity. And it's not that I'm ignoring it, but, um, there's a lot all the time in my house and in my life and in our team and in the school of ministry and the mentorship, um, because under me, they're learning about all that. So, um, it's normal. We're not crazy. We're normal in the spirit. Okay. So, um, but so I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, and just, you know, keep up with me, you guys. Um, I've released several words about the reckoning, but there's been too much recently that I'm like, okay, God's like Liberty, literally the reckoning and the recovery is upon my people. And I'll say some other things, um, included with I, what I felt like a timeline would be for that. Um, and why it's now. Okay. Um, first of all, I cannot wait to see you guys in Georgia. Um, I'm sorry, you guys, you're gonna have to go back and watch my last two videos. Well, two videos back to find out why I'm going to be in Georgia instead of Kenya. Kenya has been moved to the end of May. And um, we're still raising funds for that. So you can keep giving to that. Thank you to those who we have people continuing to give. Um, we're beyond blessed uh, to have everything we need for Kenya. Okay. Thank you guys for um, partnering with us and making it possible. Um, we will be, um, it's not small. I know in America, it's not considered small, but I'll be doing a small scale crusade there, you know, around 15,000 people. Um, typically when I go overseas, it's more like 200,000. So, um, but in America, that sounds like a lot, you know, if we'd like rented an arena and filled it up, it's like, that's a lot of people. Yes. But when, when we go over there and we're going to spend the bigger money, we usually hope for a way bigger crowd for souls. And so, um, also, I would just add this for those of you who have followed me for a long time, you know, um, I'm, I'm a prophetic evangelist. I'm an evangelist, but I'm not a street evangelist. Like I do evangelistic stuff because that gifting is in me. Um, but at the same time, I'm called to release it differently. So an evangelist is, is an evangelist. Like that's what they do. Like that's their bent. They're like soul, soul, souls. I'm soul, soul, souls, but I'm called to prophesy. And so, um, anytime I go to any of these nations, so any ministry that contacts me, um, some of them are well known. You guys would most likely have heard of them, or maybe you follow them when they contact me and say, Hey, um, we would like to do something with you in Pakistan or Costa Rica, which we're working on that. So excited, you guys. Um, there's so much, so much. But the thing is, is, um, and then Kenya and then Tanzania is also coming. There's lots of things happening. But the thing is, is I go there and I prophesy and I let them know ahead of time when they connect with me and um, they want me to begin to partner and work with them. Um, I let them know, you need to know, I'm not going as an evangelist. I'm going as a prophet because I prophesy. So for instance, when I went to Pakistan, um, hold on one second, guys. When I went to Pakistan, um, I prophesied each time I went, the Lord gave me a word for the nation. So I would go there and I prophesy. And then the, the prophecy turns into, 
<clears throat> um, who is the God of the prophecy? Who is the Lord? And then it turns into Jesus. And then, then they get an opportunity to know about Jesus and um, to participate with the Lord through salvation to see the prophecy fulfilled in Pakistan. Um, and so I prophesy, just so you know. I don't go there as an evangelist. I go there and I prophesy. I call out ailments and words of knowledge. Massive healings happen. Massive deliverance. Miracle signs, wonders. Um, they do hear the gospel, <clears throat> but not as... I don't release it as an evangelist. I release it as a prophet. So, okay. Now, having said that, um, because people will ask me about that, but... You need to know, and those of you who connect with me and ask me to go do things in other countries, you need to know. Um, I prophesy. So, um, but anyway, so excited, you guys. We will be in Georgia. And what's really cool, you want to hear what's really cool, is the name of the place that we're going to be doing our event is called the Golden Door. And it was too much God when I, we were checking our, I have someone who checks venues everywhere we go and they are the ones they go and they look they make phone calls they do all that and when the golden door came up i was like oh man that is like seriously because we're probably going to leave a lot of gold dust everywhere behind in the building so i was like this is perfect and then when they wonder what is up i can be like you're the golden door and so it i think it's really cool you guys and i was just like oh man this is too cool and so we're going to be at the golden door um, on the 26th and 27th of this month, we were going to, we're going to be doing, um, an early service during the day, like 5 PM, um, intercession and prayer with Dawn Templin from generals international with Cindy Jacobs. She is the Florida general. She's like a mama in the spirit to me. She's one of them. I have a couple here, but I love her so much. And she's also Jewish. So, um, we are kindred in that way. And so we're just a couple of rowdy Jewish girls and we're just going to come wreck it for Jesus. So it's going to have, it's going to be amazing at the golden door. So come enjoy time with us. She's powerfully anointed. You guys, you do not want to miss the time, even the intercession times. Um, it's powerful. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. What she carries is she is very, very anointed. And um, so here's an example. When we do, we'll do worship or whatever, and then I will introduce her to come up. What I carry, that's what I call it, my mantle, what I carry, um, leaps with joy when I stand next to her. And man, I can feel the glory so strong just when I'm standing next to her on, on her purity, her, her love, um, just how much God loves her, that she is literally his pure servant. And those are the people I choose to work with. And amen, you guys. And I'm excited to go and wreck it for Jesus in the glory with Miss Dawn Templin. Um, we're going to have an amazing time. So we're going to be doing intercession at 5 p.m. on Friday and then services at 7 p.m. I will be speaking at all the services. Then the next day, 11 a.m. is intercession and um, prayer and intercession with Dawn. And then 1 p.m. is another service, which is me. I will be speaking, um, ministering, I should say. And then um, do I really ever speak? Just kidding. Um, I do, you guys. You learn a lot from me. I'm just saying. And so um, and then 5 p.m. again, prayer and intercession and then 7 p.m. the final of the weekend. And so you just need to get a hotel and plan to come for all of it because um, you need to soak it up while you can be under the anointing of Don Templin's um, prayer and intercession anointing and uh, be there for every service. I'm doing every service and so excited, you guys. You don't want to miss any of it, especially the buildup. So you understand when I do a weekend like this, there's a buildup. You want to be a part of everything that the Holy Spirit's doing. Each piece, is they're all it's all connected. Every service, every word, every prayer, it's all connected. And you want to get the fullness of the whole thing, and you need to just come and enjoy. Okay, 
So moving along, the event is free also. You know I very rarely charge, hardly ever, for an event. And um, so I'm not saying someday I won't, but at this point, I haven't needed to. He provides, he pays every bill. The Lord um, is the king. And so um, I don't have any problem trusting him. And I, I have never not been able to do an event that's free. I'll have speakers come in. I fly them in. I do all kinds of stuff. And I, it's all been provided for. Um, the Lord provides it. So uh, it is a free event to you. Your investment is to get a hotel and travel there and come hungry for Jesus. And so please do that. Amen. Okay. Um, moving along. The reckoning. You shall recover all. And so... Um, basically in 2022, I know some of you are new to my channel over the last couple of years. So I'm going to include the very first serious dream that I was given about the reckoning. I've had eight or 10 about the wealth transfer and the reckoning. Okay. It's, I have dreams nightly. It's normal. And so he's just always showing me things and then he'll give me prophetic visions in my prayer time. This is just normal. And so, um, but you guys are going to laugh. Seriously, this is how it happened. Um, in 2022, I had a dream that Lucille Ball, for real, came down from heaven with two security guards. I am not joking. And um, we met up in a park and she came to me and she had two security guards, uh, someone on the right and someone on the left that were with her, like guarding her. But she, I knew she was, in the dream, I knew she was from heaven. And I believe she represented an angel bringing me a message. And this, and so I'm going to break it down for you, but I'm going to tell you the whole dream. But God is so amazing. And with me, he's funny because he knows it's like a treasure hunt. And I'm like, well, more like a scavenger hunt. Sometimes he thinks he has to be super funny. And I'm like, okay, Jesus, can you just be more clear? Can we just like get to the point here? Because it's like. This is a lot. Okay. So, but I love searching because I learn a lot, you guys, about other things when I'm researching this, this, and this. Okay. So in the dream, Lucille Ball comes down with her security. Okay. And they're on both sides of her. And she comes up to me and she said, the Lord has sent me from heaven with a message for you. And, and I was like, okay, in the dream, I was just accepting it. It was a dream, you guys. It wasn't weird to me. I wasn't sitting there going, oh man, this dead person just came from heaven to give me a message. Like it was all normal. And so um, she goes to tell me, she said, the Lord says the reckoning is coming to your enemies. The reckoning is upon my people. And he basically said, um, through her, Lucille Ball, for real, um, <coughs> the Lord sent me with a message from heaven to tell you everything that the enemy has done to you, every lie, every slanderous word, every scheme of hell, everything that he's thrown at you and used people to do it, a reckoning is coming to those people. And in the dream, she said, the Lord needs you to trust heaven's work, to trust that everything, every form of hell that you've been through, literally, you guys, I can go back to all the way since I was 17, since I was radically saved, the devil no likey likey me. And it isn't a, um, I'm, I'm this or I'm that. So there's a door open. No. Go about 2016, 700 Club featured my life story. I was on 700 Club. Also, I might add, this is really vain. I know I'm going to say it, but I look like really big, like fat and pregnant. They never show my lower half. But after the, we did it and I was talking, we filmed everything and I was talking to the producer. I'm like, what gives? I realized we do look fatter on camera. It adds like 10 or 15 pounds. It's real, you guys, for real. Um, and I said, but that's extreme because I don't look like that in real, real life. 
because I look like this, okay? And um, and he was like, I know. I don't know what the heck happened with the camera. Um, we could not fix it. And I was like, I didn't like it, but I was like, you know what? I don't even care. The devil doesn't want my testimony and my story to get out there because people are going to get delivered. So you, I don't care what I look like on camera, fat, skinny, freckles, big lipped, big teeth. I don't know, whatever guys, I don't even care. Just get, get the power of the Holy ghost and the power of the cross out there. That's all that matters. Um, but go back and watch it. Um, cause I've had people come to me and they're like, you must, were you pregnant in that video? And I was like, no, it's just the camera person did not know what they were doing evidently. So, um, but, um, go back 2000, around 2016, um, I was on the 700 club and my whole life story is on there. You're going to hear how I was radically saved, delivered from demons. Uh, Freddy Krueger for real showed up and all kinds of drama happened. So it was, it was amazing you guys. And so because it was so dramatic, you couldn't have paid me a million dollars to go back. I became an instant psycho for Jesus. Like I went from being, um, party girl, just a kid, a party girl, um, raised with no Christianity, with an alcoholic mother, to I literally flipped. It was so dramatic. Um, I had no religious background, but all powerful was the name of Jesus. And so it wrecked me to such a, a point that I just went off into Jesus land, Jesus freak land, and I've only gotten worse. So I literally did not even blink an eye. I didn't look back. Every, any and all things were removed from me that instant. I was delivered literally of all things. Um, and I literally lost my mind for Jesus. And um, I became the biggest target of all time after that. And then being Jewish and from the tribe of Judah and all the other stuff, the devil no like he liking me. He does not give me a break, but it's okay. I don't even care. I just see him and I roll over and go to sleep. Just like Smith Wigglesworth. Press on, dude. That ain't going to work. There's, you can't scare me. I've been through so much. I've seen demons flee at the name of Jesus. I have delivered people from demons at the name of Jesus. Uh-uh. You ain't got nothing on the power of the cross. So you can boogie on down the road and go harass somebody else. Okay. So, but I have had a lot of harassing and the devil has used people because that's typical. Okay. Slander, lies, backstabbing, um, any and all things to destroy. And so to hinder, to block, to distract, you name it. This is what the devil does. You guys know this. So in the dream, um, the Lord, it was a word for the whole body of Christ and I released it, but it was also personal to me, but he literally, Lucille Ball in the dream literally said, um, heaven wants you to know the Lord has been keeping track. Recompense is coming upon your enemies. Any enemy of the cross and any of my people recompense is upon them. You need to know I have kept track, Liberty. Heaven has kept track of all the enemy has been doing to you. And anyone who partnered with the devil to see your destruction attempted will pay a price. And the whole goal of it is to lead to their salvation. Because some people think they're saved and they're not, you guys. They're liars, they're slanderers, they're backstabbers, they spit on you. They are not true Christians. And so those people are going to get it first. And this is what the Lord told me after the dream. So basically in the dream, she tells me this whole story, a word from heaven brought to me. And the Lord, basically she said, the Lord says, you need to know, don't even look back to the right or to the left. You don't worry about nothing. Reckoning is coming to those who come against my anointed ones. You press on in victory and don't even look, don't even look back at nothing. 
And so I did need that encouraging message at the time. I, I could, anyone could always use it, you guys, but it was a particularly wonderfully hard season. So, um, but, uh, when, after I woke up, I knew what it meant. And, um, uh, I still never could really figure out why Lucille Ball, but I guess it's because of what her name means. Her name means light or something like that. So I think it goes back to that. It's just dream interpretation, you guys. But, um, and I'm not going to go into all that, but I could, but that's not the point right now. And so, um, but basically, um, I was so blessed. I woke up literally feeling so much victory of it just doesn't matter. We press on, you guys. The power of the cross is greater. The joy of heaven is greater. The peace that only comes from him is greater. And so, um, and then I asked him, I was like, you know, what are you telling me? And he said, Liberty, the, the reckoning is upon my people. This is for the whole body, a message for you first, because he wanted to bless me um, with this beautiful message from Lucille Ball. Um, but then it's for the body of Christ too. And he said, Liberty, my people need to know. I have been keeping track. I have kept track of all of it. My people, the true anointed ones, the ones truly living pure and are sold out to me that are the real deal Christians, the real deal body of Christ. He said, I have been watching over you, all of you. I have seen it all. Nothing has escaped me. And my people need to know I have seen it all. They do not have to battle anything on their own. They don't have to fight the enemy that, that is coming through a person. We battle flesh and blood. My people need to know the reckoning is coming and I am doing it. It is true. The Bible says that there's a reckoning and it is coming. And he said, but my people need to understand first and foremost, it's going to come to his people, the ones that call themselves Christians but he's like, Liberty, I don't know them. They don't even know me. They literally don't know me. They think they do because they're, they're being tricked and guided through the Jezebel spirit, Absalom spirit, religious spirit. They think they know me. They do not know me. And he said, they're going to get the fire and the reckoning first. And the whole goal is to help them finally know me and have that opportunity. And if not, they're a tear. It is what it is. The Bible's very clear, you guys. We're not hating on anybody. Jesus said it. It is what it is. The days of Noah, you guys. And so um, he basically said, first and foremost, all judgment comes to the house of God. And it's to bring true salvation and a real relationship to those who really are are not serving me. They say they are, but they're not. And he said, secondly, to the true enemies of the cross. And first and foremost, it's for them to get saved. Not for their destruction. So all the Christians, Christians can stand around and be like, oh yeah, look at that. No, we're to stay humble. Here's the thing. When I hear about someone falling, it literally breaks my heart. Another pastor falling and failing and having to be removed, stripped of their position in the body. It literally breaks my heart and it immediately, for you, it should not be like, oh my gosh, let's gossip, let's judge, let's find something to say, let's get on social media and be a fool and act like the world. No, our first response should be, oh man, search me, oh Lord. If there's any wicked way in me, oh man, take it because you're not above anybody. We are always to go from a place of humility. We can fail as much as any other human. And so, but when you live that lifestyle of humility and you truly care what God thinks and you fear God and you know him, you're, the true enemies that have come against you are going to receive a reckoning on your behalf. He is fighting for you. He is in the process of bringing a recovery. 
And I'm about to blow your mind with some angelic stuff right now, you guys. It's been so much. I'm about to blow your minds. So ever since that word, I don't know God's timing. He could give me a dream and it doesn't come to pass for five years. It could be 10 years. I don't know his. Okay, sometimes I know his timeline. Okay, I can't say I don't know his timeline because I do times and seasons. And I will, I do, will, I do know things. Okay. But, um, when it's going to actually be officially released and unleashed by heaven, um, I don't know the exact date, but he does give signs and wonders. And I'm about to get into that. So one of the recent words that he had given me about the reckoning, I'm going to read it to you. Um, um, and this was a word I posted it in written form. You need to subscribe to my email, spiritmoveministry.global, and then you'll get the stuff that goes out in written form. The Lord, you belong to me. This is what the word was. Um, and it was an encouragement to people because many of you, so let me explain this, okay? What I was saying, our attitude should never be, um, oh yeah, God's bringing a reckoning to all you evil peoples. No, you've been evil too. You were once super stupid, okay? So that's, the point is not to, he doesn't want us looking at it that way because then you're going to fall into be getting spanked by the reckoning. If you don't want to be spanked, you want to be one of the ones that's like, Lord, because let me tell you, let me tell you the real deal. When I woke up from the dream, I literally cried. And I began to calculate a list back in my head. Oh man, I can feel the glory. Of those who have slandered me, who have tried to destroy me, my previous, the church I was, I was lead pastor, the global ministry I have now. Um, and at one point, I still love those people, but at one point they were under me and they became an Absalom or a Jezebel. And you need to understand they don't survive in my ministry. You're either going to get delivered and submit and start breaking that cycle and showing a new cycle or you're out. You get pruned. I, I'm not playing games with no demons. And the Lord has made it very clear to me. There is to be no mixture. Well, when that happens, your circle gets really small. Your staff gets really small. And then your church, well, not fully the church side, because some people of, of them are clueless. They're just attending and they love you and they're new believers or whatever. But those who are on the inside, they get pruned out and then the people have to start leaving. And it's necessary, you guys. Um, and so, but at the same time, the reason why I was so sad, you guys, because at one point, those people were under me. They were being discipled by me. I loved them and I poured everything into them. And so that love never leaves. When you're a pastor, especially over people, that love doesn't leave. They're like a kid running away and becoming a prodigal. That's how it feels. And it literally breaks your heart. And so when I woke up from the dream, I was like, oh man, Lord, there's a lot of people on that list of reckoning. And I literally, my heart was broken for them. That they had chosen a path that would put them in the, whoo, put them in the path of the reckoning. Man, what a horrible place to position yourself. But it broke my heart because I love those people, even though they did wrong and had to be pruned out or whatever. Um, I loved them with a pure love as their leader. And so that's how we're supposed to feel about what our enemies are going to get. And so it's very important that the body of Christ react Christ-like in all situations, because otherwise you get pruned, you get the reckoning, and then you get a piece of the spanking. We have to remain humble in all things. Okay. So this is the word that he gave me. Um, but I have to throw that disclaimer out there, you guys, because pride is a comes before a fall. 
You're no better than nobody just because you're not on the receiving end of the reckoning. It doesn't make you anything. It's sad, you guys. It should make you sad. The sin should break your heart. It should break your heart. If it breaks his heart, it should break your heart. That's that. Amen. So you belong to me. The Lord said many of my people need to be reminded that you belong to me. No matter what the enemy brings again, brings, uh, brings you, um, no matter what the enemy brings you cannot be snatched out from my hand. No matter what he brings to you or does to you or whatever, it cannot snatch you out of his hand. You cannot be snatched from my plan. You cannot be snatched from my goodness and my love. Remember my people, you belong to me. I take very good care of those things that belong to me. Many attacks will come, struggles will come, pain and loss will show up at different times throughout your life. But one thing remains in the midst of all that, you belong to me. And if you belong to me, you have nothing to fear, you are never alone. And then he said, I am very good at reckoning things. There's a reckoning that's coming to my people that have suffered many things because of the attacks of the enemy. I have been watching and waiting and preparing to bring a re release of the reckoning and the recompense on behalf of my people. This is the season we are in as I prepare to return to my people all that's been stolen from them. Because you belong to me. You can trust I'm working all things for your good and my glory because <clears throat> you love me. Just so you know, that's the rule. Just because you call yourself a Christian doesn't put you in that category. We actually have to know him. Okay. Um, and what gets, you can trust all that I'm working, um, working all things out for your good and my glory. And what gets returned will be better than what was stolen. Listen, what gets returned will be better than what was stolen. It will be more beautiful, more full of truth, joy than more joy than ever before. Trust me, my people, and remember, I'm in every step you take. I'm your shepherd. I'm your protector. I'm your keeper. I'm your provider. I'm your whole future. I'm your first love. I'm your constant. And then, of course, the verse, Romans 8, 28, um, he works all things out um, for your good and for his glory, um, it's according to his riches and glory, but it's for those who love him. And so that means you have to actually know him. And so you have to actually have a relationship with him. It can't be religion. It can't be through deception, Jezebel, Absalom, uh, climbing for position. I could go all day. You guys, that's a whole nother book. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. What does he mean by um, what you receive will be better than what was stolen? Let me explain to you. I had a prophecy spoken over me. I hope you guys are keeping up with me. You need to listen to this whole word, you guys. You don't want to miss any of this because I'm about to tell you some serious dramatic stuff that happened recently to prove that it's about to go down the reckoning and um, that the Lord is serious. And you can trust him, you guys, you can trust him, you can trust him. And so, um, basically what he means by better is, okay, you guys, this could end up being two hours. It is not going to be, I promise. Okay. But, um, there's so much in each of the one sentence could be like a two hour sermon or two hour message or whatever. Um, when God allows something to be pruned off, if he replaces it, he's not replacing it. Oh man, you're going to get that thing back. No, that thing needed to go. You don't want that back. You don't want the same thing back. You want God's version of that thing. And it's always going to be hundreds of times better than what what the enemy took. So here's what happens too. 
is sometimes, and I'll just throw this out there, it's not the point of this message or this prophetic word or the prophetic dream or the angelic activity, but I'm going to say it anyway. Sometimes a loss isn't a loss. It's a gain in Christ. It's a gain in the glory realms. It's a gain for you. You just don't know it when it's happening. Okay. So aside from that, um, years ago, probably 2019, there was someone who spoke a prophetic word over me and released it to me. I was a lead pastor. I had had one of the missionaries, Assembly of God missionaries that I, um, I was a huge supporter of her and she was basically doing an area over near Russia. And, um, I had, I wanted her to come speak to kind of tell everybody because she was there, you know, re raising funds to go back out. And so, but she came to my service to speak and she brought her parents. I never met her parents. I just knew that they were other AG pastors. Okay. So they took the Sunday and had someone fill in and then they came so they could support her and, um, never met them in my life. They didn't know nothing about me. They didn't know nothing about the church plant. They didn't know nothing about nothing. And, um, right at the end of service, he comes up to me and he said, the Lord just gave me a word for you. And he didn't know nothing. He just knew my name and that, you know, I was the lead pastor. And he comes up to me and he said, I have a word for you. The Lord says, you're about, you're going to, you're going to get double for your trouble. A double portion of blessing, provision, joy, um, uh, blessing, provision, whatever, anointing, um, like you've never known is coming. And, um, he basically said, you're, you're going to be getting double for your trouble, double the joy for the tears you've cried because of pain, double for, um, the lies and slander, the attacks of the enemy, um, double, double, double. And he said, you're going to receive double because of your faithfulness to him, because no matter what the enemy has thrown at you, you have never quit. You've never given up. And so because of that, you're going to receive double for your trouble. And the Lord says, you're going to get the desires of your heart. And it's going to be double the desires of your heart. So boom, I, it, my mind is blown. And, and then he just looks at me and I'm like, write it down. So he hurried and wrote it down. And I still have that word. It has not fully been fulfilled for me. Um, it, cause it could have included a lot of different things. It has not been fully fulfilled and, but God is faithful and whatever it is, we can receive double for our trouble. You guys, you have to know your faithfulness does not go unnoticed. And so you will recover all. This is the word for you right now. It doesn't matter what you see around you. It doesn't matter what has happened in your past. It doesn't matter what rejection you've had. It doesn't matter what someone has said to you, done to you. It doesn't matter. You shall recover all. And you're going to recover all. But you have to understand the all doesn't always look like what we think. You need to be ready to jump in with all joy and peace and, and whatever to receive it because the reckoning it, there's been a massive shift. There's been a massive shift. Now I'm going to tell you this right now. I believe the massive shift happened with the eclipse. The, there was a massive shift. And the reason I say that was because when I had a dream about the eclipse in 2022, I had two other dreams the same night. And typically when God does that, they're all connected, at least for me. Okay. And so several things were happening in the other two dreams. Number one, there was a huge financial, financial blessing being given to somebody. Number two, the other dream was there were people that 
because of certain behavior, if something touched them, they died. And so here's the thing. There's a lot that could be in that. But I already knew when the, when the, when the eclipse was coming, you guys, I was like, oh man, Lord, you gave me the dream. This was, this is why in my, when I talked about the eclipse in the other word, I said, he hasn't given me anything dramatic or I would have got on and say it, said it. I'm, if others heard something, more power to you. Your mantle to hear that. Amen. For me, I felt like it was a shift. It represented a shift. Physically, what that is for you, it's between you and the Lord. What, what you are going to be recovering is different than maybe other people. And it is a recovering. You shall recover all. Now, let me give you an example of recovering. Um, let's, let me give you an example. Let's say somebody was a shyster and they stole from you financially. You lost money because of somebody's evil behavior. I believe the eclipse and after is going to be beginning the returning process. But God's not just going to return to you the fine, just the financial amount that was stolen, but you're going to get double. You're going to get double. And you want to say seven? That's great. You want to say 10? That's super amazing. Whatever you want it to be, don't limit God. But I felt like he told me, Liberty, double for your trouble. And I'm releasing this word over you guys. I have not seen the fulfillment of every one of those words. Now, at the same time, I could say that I have because I view things that happen differently. I don't see a loss as a loss. I don't really feel like anything's been stolen from me because anything that's, that the Lord allows for me, because I do love him and I know him, it's all for my good. So therefore, at the end of the day, it's already a gain without any other physical proof. But at the same time, he is a God of recovery. The same way you can recover your sight, the same way you can recover your hearing, the same way you can recover your health, the same way, the same, same, same. He's a recovering God. And so, um, you shall recover all. And so you're going to receive back double. Now, um, Sometimes the recovery comes in a prodigal coming home. Sometimes the wealth transfer is um, you went through a long season of a dark season where maybe you went through a very bad divorce where evil and sin was done against you and your whole life was torn apart. And that dark season, man, it was dark but it was inflicted upon you. But at the same time, God allowed it because that wasn't meant to be anymore. It was not ordained of God and he, he, he allowed it for whatever reason. We don't know why you guys. And so, um, we cannot question his ways. And so, so then what'll happen is, is your, your wealth transfer, your receiving and recovering of all your um, reckoning, your end of the reckoning of the receiving of the blessing is of all that was stolen from you is going to, could be like what, he, what was prophesied over me, double the joy. So now, man, you, it was like a joyless dark season for a second, maybe a couple of years. And the Lord is going to restore back to you all that the enemy tried to steal double the joy. So now you're going to go into a season of massive oil of gladness. It's going to be poured upon you in a mighty way. And you're going to have so much heavenly joy you have never known. And, and it's going to be double for your trouble. So sometimes it does not look like what we think. How heaven views something is different than how we view it sometimes, you guys. We have to be willing and understand God's ways are not our ways. They're much higher. Do you understand? You can have 
the joy of the Lord like nothing before and then stand before someone and die for Jesus with all happiness on your face. What heaven says is different, you guys. It's different. And so, but some of it will come in physical finances. Some of it will come in physical recovery of a prodigal or of your health. The enemy's been trying to steal your health. The, and the Lord, you're going to recover it. Whatever it is, or a marriage, you the Lord allowed a marriage loss in your previous history and it was a terrible time for you back, you know, that was a dark time. So now he's re releasing joy, but maybe that person did not, was not the right person for you at the time or whatever. It was wrong. Okay. There was no honor, respect. There was nothing. And the Lord, now you're going to end up, God's going to bring you a new kingdom spouse but this time it's going to be everything your heart's desired, everything you have always would have wanted. And it's going to be what you can't imagine. And it's hard to imagine those things when you've never had it, but he needs us to be ready to receive the, you shall recover all. And so then your desire would have always been to be with a, have a, a, a super pure godly on fire wife or a super pure godly on fire husband. You didn't have that in the past, but God is going to give you that now. It's the reckoning. It's the recovery. It's double for your trouble. For real, you guys, it's upon you. Now, I'm going to tell you this angel story <clears throat> and it's going to seal the deal. Okay. See this? Okay. Okay. This is a non-working phone. I keep it, it's an old phone. I've had it for like three years. It's not active. It doesn't have anything on it. Um, I simply use it for Bluetooth for worship um, because, okay, number one, I'm just gonna teach you a couple things right now. Number one, my phone is not with me when I'm in, in with the Lord in the mornings. I leave my phone in the kitchen because I'm not going to get on it. Okay. It's Jesus time. So I have this phone, which is not active. So I can use it for my Bluetooth with my speaker and not have the excuse that I need my phone so I can have worship. So I position myself to have no distractions. Okay. So this phone, I was sitting here, literally, I was not in devotion. It was later in the day, but I was it was the afternoon, and I was once again spending time with the Lord, um, just sitting here where I'm at right now, actually, and I had uh, worship going, fake fireplace on the TV, and um, I was going through my dream journals, and I was just, sometimes he'll have me go back through, you know, for whatever reason, so I was going back through my dream journals, just spending time with the Lord. Okay, this is what I always do, you guys. I pretty much probably, I could probably give about 18 hours a day to Jesus. Probably do. Okay. So it's not really a, a time I set aside. It's just like my whole life. Okay. So I was just sitting here hanging out with him, going through my dream journals. I had worship music on, um, you know, whatever. And um, this was sitting here, this non-working phone was sitting over to my left because I had certain music playing on it and um, it was just sitting there. I hadn't even touched it. And so um, I was just sitting there and um, I was worshiping, I was going through my dreams and I had read a couple of things and it reminded me and I was like, oh yeah, this morning I did not declare, um, you know, um, that the Lord is gonna return um, everything that the enemy stole, stolen, you know, I taught you guys about that and you have not because you asked not video. And I was like, you know, so I did it. And I said, I said, I declare, I shall recover all. I declare you guys, this, I'm not, this is the real deal. Uh, if it happens all the time in my house. Okay. Um, and I was just declaring and I was just, you, you give power to it by declaring you guys. So I was declaring and then as I sat there and I finished saying the declaration, 
I went to go back through my dream journal and um, all of a sudden to my left, my phone buzzed. You guys, seriously, my phone buzzed like I was getting a message. And um, I literally just felt the glory so strong hit me. And I was like, oh man, because I knew because there's no way the phone could buzz. Okay. And so, um, I was like, oh man. So the phone vibrated and buzzed like I had gotten a message and I sat because I knew what was happening, that an angel was here and something was up and something was about to go down. And so I immediately just went into a place of like get on my face on the floor. Oh man. And, um, and so I just sat here and I was like, my phone just buzzed. Oh man. And I went to pick it up and on the lock screen, a book that's on my other phone, an audio book I listened to over a year ago was open on this phone to chapter seven, of course it's seven. And the title of the chapter said, you shall recover all. I'm not joking. And I sat here with my mind blown and I was like, oh man. And I just started crying in the glory. I'm not gonna, yeah, whatever. Being a blubbering, you know, in the glory. And, um, the Lord's like, Liberty, I'm serious. You shall recover all. The reckoning is upon my people. I'm about to begin the process of the return of everything that's been stolen. It is upon you. Trust all that I'm doing in the heavenly realm. Trust it. So literally, he's he, the angel manipulated the phone. You guys, they do this. It's for real. Opened it to that audio book to chapter seven, which is titled, we shall recover or you shall recover all. You cannot make this stuff up. And I was like, I was like in a, the glory for days on that one, because yes, I have feathers. I have gold dust always, um, everywhere, um, all over my house. And so, um, silver dust, like you name it, but this was a whole nother realm. You shall recover all. And I hope you made it all the way through the video, you guys, and you you're listening and you're receiving this whole word because I'm about to pray for you. Amen. And the Lord says the reckoning is here. The eclipse, it was the shift. Um, it began the shift. And so what that means is, is as everything went dark during the eclipse, woo, man, I can feel the glory. As it went dark, it was a sign of what is about to come upon the enemies of his anointed ones. It is the reckoning, you guys. It is the reckoning. And number one, before I pray for you, number one, you receive this message with all humility. You receive this message with not joy, like, oh, go get them, Jesus. No. You receive this message with humility. And you say, oh, Lord, whatever happens, bring salvation to their doorstep. First and foremost, let them who are on the receiving end of the spanking find you, Lord and get radically saved and know who you are in the midst of the reckoning. First and foremost, we want people to find Christ, to finally see him and become a real Christian. And we don't want it to happen through the reckoning. But the word is very clear, you guys. And so, but we still pray for our enemies. 
So that's first and foremost. You remain humble, not haughty. You go in with a heart of brokenness. That, oh man. Because you love these people. And you know you do. Before somebody did something to you, you loved them. Well, you know what? You still got to love them. At least enough to, to want them to be saved, you guys. And delivered. We know that that's not going to happen with everybody because some people are tares. It is what it is. But just in case they're not, and there is hope for them, man, we want hope for them. And so, but then secondly, number two, trust that the reckoning is upon you, which means it's upon your enemies. All that the devil has stolen from you is going to be returned. You will receive double for your trouble, the desires of your heart. Some of it's not even what you even ever knew you wanted or thought you were going to want. But the Lord knows us better than we know ourselves. And then when you get it, you're going to be like, oh man, how beautiful is the Lord. He needs you to trust him in this season, body of Christ. You shall recover all. He is working. He is moving. You are not alone. You belong to him. He is your constant. At the end of the day, he is everything. All the things that get returned to you is just an add-on of his beauty. You already, you already have what is the most valuable. And that's a true walk with Christ. There's nothing greater. There's nothing greater. Amen. So let's pray. You guys ready? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you and we glorify you. And um, first and foremost, we just say, Lord, our heart breaks for those who are going to be on the receiving end of the reckoning and the spanking. We lift them to you, Lord. We pray for them. We pray for their souls, that they would come to know you. And those who already call themselves Christians but don't know you, that they would come to know you, Lord. That they would have an opportunity to know you. And Lord, we just declare salvation over them. We declare humility over them. We declare a deliverance over them. And Lord, at the same time as we pray for them and it breaks our heart to know that they're on the receiving end, we still know that you are the one true God, that you do keep your word. If you said, I shall recover all, double for my trouble, it shall be. Your word is true and it does not come back void. So God, we say this day, we believe you. We will receive your word. We declare it into the atmosphere of the enemy's camp. We shall recover all. All will be returned to me that's been stolen. I will receive double for my trouble or ask for seven times or ask for 10. And so, um, don't limit God, but the biggest point of this word and this dream and the angelic encounter is for you to know he is working. You guys do not think that you are doing this on your own. You are never on your own at all. If he is the love of your life, he is your everything. You are never alone. He is doing everything with you, but it's important that, that we participate with him his way where there's no mixture we have to be pure of heart you guys you have to have a love for people and hate the fact that they have to get a spanking man that should rip you up that my biggest thing is 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 i even said this to the lord i said man lord why would they position themselves for this why I don't want to see this. I don't want to watch it. But it's the truth, you guys. And the truth sets you free. And the goal is for them to be free and actually be saved. And so we have to know that God has a bigger plan in it all. Amen. But for you this day, he needs you to accept. You shall recover all. You will receive double for your trouble. Amen. Stand on it, body of Christ. Stand on it. And I hope you made it through this whole word. I love you guys. I'm going to go.
Have an amazing, amazing rest of your whatever. I'll still probably talk to you again before Atlanta. But I cannot wait to be with you guys in Atlanta. Um, there's so much great things that God is doing, you guys. We, the shift has, has, has started for real. This is the time to walk in faith and to declare. And to not let the enemy make you think you have not made, this is a whole other video, made progress. You can't receive the gifts that are coming that are being given to you. It's not a replacement. It's double for your trouble. It's better than you ever could have imagined. It's not all, sometimes it can be scary getting there because sometimes we can't imagine big enough. We can't believe big enough, you guys. And then when we see God, it's like, oh man, he might actually, he might actually be doing that. Like he might be doing this. Like this is a real thing. Like, oh my goodness. He needs us to trust him. Don't let the devil lie to you and make you think you have to walk around in any kind of rejection or shame or anything else. You can't receive what's been stolen from you back, but double, seven, ten, whatever. You can receive it back, you guys. Beauty for ashes. The desires of your hearts. A return for what was stolen from you, but not just a return, double. We have to believe that when we're faithful... His word is true, which means he's faithful. The enemy wants us to go around being like, well, what if I'm not faithful enough? Or what if I did this or what shame, old shame or whatever, condemnation or whatever? Rebuke it. If you do know that you know him and you have a true walk with him and he is your whole life, there is a reckoning coming on your behalf. You can trust him. You can trust him. He is covering you. He is walking with you. He is faithful, you guys. Amen. Okay, I'm going to go, guys. I love you. Pray for Israel. Always pray for Israel, you guys. This is all prophecy playing out. Um, I'm big on prayer calls. Um, you know, went and prayed Sunday night. Um had an amazing time at a local ministry here. Um, and uh, God's on the move, you guys. And we pray for Israel. We stand up for Israel. We back Israel. Um, but we know and we have to stand firm on the fact that his word will come to pass. Amen. And this is all moving towards Isaiah 11. Amen. Okay. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.